Today on All Out Brick, we're going to be taking a look at the Bionicle Toa Nuva. We're going to build them, review them, and then give out a score. Let's get started. I'm Christian from All Out Brick. Welcome to another Matsunui Monday. As always, the best way to tag along with us every week is to subscribe and turn on notifications. This week, we're going to be building the Bionicle Toa Nuva, which released during the 2002 line of Bionicle. After defeating Kadok and Gadok, the Toa Mata were sucked down into tubes of Protodermis. The Protodermis caused them to morph, giving them new armor and weapon upgrades. Their masks also changed as a result, and they managed to gain some new and enhanced elemental powers. After this, they were referred to as the Toa Nuva rather than the Toa Mata. Looking at the canisters they come in, I have to say these have got to be my favorite so far in terms of packaging out of all the sets we've done. Definitely going to be tough to beat in the future. There's just a ton of detail on all sides of the canister here. On the front, we have the picture of the Toa and some Nuva symbols in the background. Really a nice color of each one in the background to kind of shake it up from canister to canister. There's also a second action shot on the side of the canister. This is also done for each Toa and I really like that they included like two full-size images of the Toa and on what I guess you'd call like the backslash side of the canister we have some warnings as well as the age range 7 plus and the set number. Inside we receive a bundle of pieces along with the instructions and some advertisement material. This should be a fairly quick build so let's jump right in. Toa Nuva are now complete. The build in total took 25 minutes, which is a little bit above four minutes per Toa. I'm not sure how this relates to when I built the Toa Mata. However, I imagine it's really close, if not exactly the same as the build time it took for them. Of course, the main thing that you want to know is how do these look compared to the Toa Mata? Well, they definitely look bulkier and stronger. I think the armor, the new pieces such as the legs and really the armor do a great job of really enhancing their look. They absolutely look bulkier, stronger, can take on more physical enemies. And I think they absolutely nailed it here because they look similar enough to where it's like yeah these are still the same characters but they absolutely look like they went and got some major upgrades from the shop they also have a little bit more of a consistency across the board here the silver really ties that together you know we got the different accent colors with like the blue for Gali, the red for Tahu, and you know, and so on. But the silver is kind of what keeps everything consistent together. With the original Toamata, we kind of didn't have that. And this, I think, really strikes that virtue of unity in Bionicle, right? They look like they together form a single group and they all have different special abilities. Whereas like in the original Toamata, you could kind of say like, oh yeah, like they don't look like they're together, if that makes sense. The armor definitely gives them that like bulkier, stronger look than any Toa we've seen before but the weapons is what really solidifies that they could take on stronger enemies. Across the board here, every single Toa has like this unique, very intricate looking weapon. They're all silver. I like that. At first I thought I wasn't gonna like the fact that they were all silver weapons. I liked originally with the Toa Mata how like we had the green ax with Lewa and the blue hooks with Gali, the black claws with Onua. And I thought that I was gonna miss the fact that that wasn't each individualized to each Toa, but the silver weapons, I gotta say, they really grew on me really fast, and I couldn't imagine them using like different colored weapons. Like looking at them right now, if they were like solid colored weapons, like for example, say Tahu swords were red right now, I don't think it would look as good. I think the silver weapon actually looks stronger as it should, right? You know, it looks like shiny, more metallic, looks stronger, more powerful of a weapon. And therefore, I think it was a great choice to give our Toa Mata these weapons. A big upgrade from the 2001 Toa that we saw is the fact that these weapons are very versatile in the terms of like how you can display your Toa. A lot of the Toa is mainly like, I think it's Kopaka, Tahu, Gali, and Onua you can change up how their weapons are located on their body. You can put them on their feet to give them this completely unique look. For Kopaka, he looks like he's skiing. Onua's kind of like rumbling through the terrain. Tahu's got this lava surfboard. And Gali's got some extra fins to help her go through the water a little bit faster all of which they do a great job of adding some extra layers to the Toa. This is something that we previously hadn't seen. I think this is a good example of when they looked at those models and said, hey, where can we improve? The only thing they didn't improve on, which really bothers me, is the neck articulation. 
We saw with the Toa Kaitsa in the 2001 models, there was no neck articulation with the base models in 2001 Toa Mata, and here with the Toa Nuva, we still have no articulation. The most we get here is Onua is able to wobble his head back and forth just because of the way it's attached to the armor. Aside from that, you know, why is there no neck articulation? I feel like a year and a half is enough time to have come up with a better design for that, especially when they've upgraded so many other parts of the Toa. It really kind of bugs me that they didn't do this part. Aside from the armor, I think the first thing you're going to notice, maybe even before the armor, you'll notice that the masks are different. I really like the look that these masks present. I think that there's a little bit more detail. They look a little bit more organic. The thing I don't like about these masks though is they feel a little thicker and in turn that makes them feel a little cheaper in my opinion. I think there was a little bit of a more like delicacy to those original Toa Mata masks that these don't have. And yeah, I mean, I'm not really sure why they're so much thicker, but they just, that makes them feel a little cheaper being this thick, but there's a lot of extra details in here that I like that they included, and I think those balance each other out. The masks also feel a little bit too big on some models, mainly like Onua and Pohatsu, their masks are enormous. I think dialing that down a little bit would have been a good choice, but you know, I think, like I said, everything with the masks balances each other out. I just think that it's a great thing that they put in some extra detail to give our Toa a little bit more life. The Toa Nuva include combination models called the Toa Nuva Kaita. They show up in the 2003 storyline. We don't see them in 2002. So I won't go into like a lot of detail as to where we see them until we get to, you know, some further point in 2003 when we do actually see them. I really hope that this isn't just like a rehash of the 2001 Toa Matsu Kaita builds. So let's just go ahead, disassemble these and see what we get out of these combination builds. Toa Nuva Kaita are complete. In total, it was 25 minutes, exactly the same as it took to build all six of the base Toa Nuva models. And the first thing I have to say is that this is definitely not what I kind of feared, which was that it was going to be very similar to the Toa Mata Kaita. That's not the case at all here. Throughout both of the models, there's very new building techniques, something that like weren't in the originals. Obviously, you can only differentiate so much with like kind of the same piece makeup, but they definitely look like they went out of their way to make sure it wasn't like the Toa Mata Kaita. Even just looking at comparing one to the other, it, they're not very similar. Like one's way taller than the other. They're very different. And that to me is something that was important that they got across in the Toa Nuva Kaita and didn't fall into that trap. So good job, Lego. Much like the Mata Kaita though, these are basically just like more articulating models than the base models, obviously bigger. Something that I kind of feel like comes off across in these Toa Nuva Kaita is that they look almost like they're under armored. It looks like the base models have more protection and armor and firepower, not firepower, than these ones do. And I guess it's because there's just like some parts that are bare and there's only so much armor to cover everything. And that's just a, that's just what was going to happen inevitably. But I can't help but think like, mm, I don't know, like, yeah, they got some better weapons, some bigger stuff. And you know, that's all great. And they can probably take out like a stronger enemy, but they don't look like they could survive a very big hit, which of course that is true. It shows up in 2003 storyline, not going to spoil anything there yet, but does come out there. Now, of course, go figure with these models. What would they include that they didn't include in the base models? Neck articulation. Now, this varies from one to the other. In one, the head can rotate on a ball joint, and much like the uh, Toa Mata Kaita models could, and just gives you way more range of motion. Whereas the other one is kind of like how Toa Onua Nuva is, in that his head can like wobble back and forth, and that's about it but it can't rotate on the ball. And this was because they ran out. It's just a piece limitation. I looked at like what pieces were left over when I finished building this one and it was like, yeah, you know what? They really couldn't have found a way. They would have had to modify stuff elsewhere in order to make that work. The only other downside to these is that you know, they're a little unbalanced. Um, the legs are kind of stiff to move. They're definitely not the easiest things. I kind of got them set up and really haven't touched them much at all since because they definitely feel like they're going to topple over and you have to make sure you get it right to set them up. That's unfortunate, but with so many pieces, I understand why that happens. Overall, looking at the Toa Nuva, well, they're definitely, I think, better than the Toa Mata. And I say that 
because yeah, I know you can't replace what the Toamata did originally in 2001, but these took things that weren't in the Toamata and just beefed them up more. I mean, we got bulkier armor, we got some new weapons, there's more of advanced features that you can perform with the weapons on the base models. So all around, I think there's definitely upgrades there. So I have to say, like they, they're definitely better than the Toamata, not as necessarily iconic, but they're definitely better sets than the Toamata and certainly cheaper and more affordable, which we'll get into very shortly. But yeah, I mean, if you can get these models, why not go get them? They definitely feel to me like something that you should have. And if you're building Bionicles and you're collecting Bionicles, you know, the Toa Nuva are a great place to start because again, they are cheaper than the Toa Mata. In terms of price, what we're looking at here is about $10 for a used Toa Mata. Now that's not really that much expensive than like what it released for. I think originally it released for probably seven or $8 and now it's only $10 used. That's a, that's a fantastic, you know, not a very steep, increase in price. For new though, um, yeah, you're going to see it. Brand new, a lot of them are going to cost around $40. And I say a lot of them because Tahu Nuva, for some reason, I mean, he's just the most popular, right? <laughs> Can't help it. He's the most popular one. He's going to be over $100. Right now, I think on Bricklink, the cheapest one is $150 brand new. So definitely just go used on these ones make sure you're getting them from pl a place that's like not broken pieces or anything and you shouldn't have any problem finding them for around like ten dollars each as for a score i'm gonna give the toa nuva an eight three like i said they're definitely like some upgrades compared to the toa mata i think that toa mata score by the way i gave them a seven eight that should probably be a lot higher than it is. I just didn't want to give like the first review a crazy score. So that's why that is so low to 7.8. But anyways, these are an 8.3. They're definitely an upgrade from the Toa Mata. They, obviously the designers looked at what things went wrong with that and where they could improve. There were some things that weren't that great about this. Like I mentioned earlier, the mask quality, it's, they feel a little cheaper to me. There's some extra details in there and those are fantastic, but they feel a little cheaper. I really like the weapon upgrades that they did here and they certainly made them different enough and included some new piece mold variations that to me says you know what these are worth getting they easily could have shooed in just throwing in some extra armor padding and being like hey look we released some new sets but they didn't do that they did it with some other sets which we're going to get into in a couple weeks probably but for the toa nuva at least i really like how they were able to kind of build up from the toa mata but not make them so similar that it's just like not worth it so eight three that's your review. Thank you guys for watching. If you like this video, be sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel to be the first to see all of our future content. Also be sure to check us out on our website and on our Facebook and Instagram pages. Until next time, stay bricking.